thank God. And sometimes we forget to thank God. And the psalmist says these words. Psalms 136. Give thanks to the Lord. Okay, come on, you have to be a little bit more sharper than that, saints. Give thanks to the Lord. For He is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of God. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of his love endures forever. You know, church, it is a good thing to always give thanks to the Lord. It's always a good thing to always give thanks to the Lord. Do you realize that every single day, God has so much patience every single day to put up with you. Every single day, He's patient goes on and on to put up with each and every one of us. He puts up with our attitude. He puts up with our behavior. He puts up with our winching and complaining and He still loves you. That is worth thanking God for. He loves us unconditionally regardless of how many times we whine and we complain and we do the wrong thing. Yet He still loves us. Still believes in us. And still calls us His own. It's a good thing to always thank God. And to add on to that. Did you know that every single day, He's always watching over us. Protecting us. Looking after us. David in Psalms 139. Uh, 139, he says, where can I flee from your presence? Oh God. He knows our thoughts. He knows every single thing about us. Here's another one. And he knows when we're making excuses. He knows when we are hiding things. He knows everything there is to know about us. And aren't you glad that every time you make mistakes, that God doesn't strike you with lightning? He will never ever say, you know what? I've just had enough with you, Bob. I'm just going to remove all the air from you today. Regardless of how many times we fail and we stumble, yet he still remains as a faithful God. That deserves thanks. That deserves us saying, Lord, I thank you for who you are. And I was pondering on this. And I thought, how often do we spend time asking God for things? Lord, I need your help. Lord, help me. Protect my family. Protect my kids. Protect my work. I need your help. Guide me. Feed me. Bless me. Lead me. Use me. All about me. The good old fashioned what about me? And we do a lot of that. How about taking some serious time when you don't ask for anything. And you just say, God, you are good. God, you are gracious. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your presence. I thank you for the blood of Jesus. I thank you for my family, for my children. I thank you for my wife. I thank you for our church. Putting time aside to thank God for who he is. One of our family devotions, uh, one night, I just said to our family, look guys, Forget the asking. We're just going to thank God. Yes? We're just going to thank God for who He is. The psalmist says, give thanks to the Lord. For He is good. So my topic this morning is the power of praise and <coughs> thankfulness. The power of praise and thankfulness. The uh, psalm says this. Enter His gates with... Thanksgiving. Enter His gates with... Thanksgiving. And is caught with praise. You realize that thanksgiving and praise, they go together. Thanksgiving and praise, they go together. You know the crippled man, when he looked up and saw Peter and John and asked him for something. The moment that crippled man in the book of Acts, the moment he was healed, he started praising God and thanking God for who he is. The woman in the, uh, uh, in the Bible who was healed from uh, 12 long years with that issue of blood, the moment she was healed, she thanked God and she began to praise the Lord for who He is. 
What about that guy that was possessed by 3,000 demons? That's a lot of demons. And yet none of those demons could stand the power of Jesus Christ. What does that say about us? You and I have more authority than every demon, foul, stinking thing in the world. God's power is more powerful. When that man was delivered and set free, he thanked God and he began to praise God for who he is. Everyone in the New Testament, when they were delivered and healed, every time they got healed, they thanked God. And they began to praise him for who he is. There was a testimony that I read. It was a very powerful testimony of a lady by the name of Angela Haley. And she, she told the story of the power of thankfulness. She told the story of their family. They uh, got back from holiday. They went overseas, arrived back from holiday. And two weeks later, she, she came down with, in her own words, uh, she, she came down with this virus. She suddenly, from somebody who's very active, suddenly discovered that uh, she couldn't get out of bed, struggling to get out of bed. And on top of that, she had problem breathing, was struggling to breathe. And on top of that, she, she found it hard to even lift up her head. She felt as if her body was slowly shutting down. In her own words, she felt like she was in a coma. And to make things worse, the doctors, they have done all sorts of tests on her. They tested her for this and tested her for that. And it was frustrating because it came back negative. There is nothing wrong with you yet. She knew something is wrong. I know something is wrong. And the doctors actually got frustrated with her because they thought it was all in her head. But she knew that something was wrong. So a family friend who is a doctor, it's always good to have a family friend who's a doctor, isn't it? Yeah. So he started looking into it. He started investigating and discovered that Angela has a condition called secret, uh, secretaria toxin. Secretaria toxin. What in the world? Who's heard of this condition? Yeah, I've never heard of it before. Secretaria toxin is a foodborne illness caused by eating uh, subtropical and tropical warm water fish. The secretaria toxin is odorless, tasteless, and heat resistant, and more, which is the reason why they they found it really hard to, uh, to detect and that sort of thing. And she went to church, they prayed, they anointed her with oil, and she felt that nothing was happening. Then one of her pastors came up to her and said, Angela, have you thanked God in this? You think about that. Have you thanked God in this? And she broke down cry because she's a woman that knows the scripture. She understands the scripture. Yet in the middle of all of this, she forgot to thank God. She forgot to even quote. Her mind was saying, what, thank God that I'm going home to be with him? But she started thanking God for who he is. She started saying, Lord, I just thank you that you are a good God. Even though nothing has happened, I thank you that you are a miracle working God. You are a way maker. I thank you that you are a way maker. She started praising God for who he is. And she did this continuously. And she felt something had shifted inside of her. She said the more she did it, she could hear this voice inside of her saying, I will be glorified in this. And the more she did it, the better she felt today. She is completely healed and set free by the power of Jesus Christ. Why? Because she had learned to praise and thank God in the midst of all of the saints. There is power in praise and thankfulness. And I think sometimes it's good for us to begin to praise God and thank Him regardless of what we go through in life. Psalm says this, give thanks to the Lord for He is, His love endures. Look what the, uh, Paul says in Thessalonians. Rejoice always. always. Pray continuously. Now look at verse 18. Give thanks in all circumstances. You say that again? Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. 
What does that mean, give thanks in all circumstances? It means when you're sick, you give thanks. When you're wealthy, you give thanks. When you're wild, you give thanks. When you're broke, you give thanks. When you've got money, you give thanks. You give thanks when you're happy and you give thanks when you're angry. In all circumstances. And I challenge each and every one as believers, as born again believers, to practice giving thanks in all circumstances, declaring how good and faithful God is. And God's people say, this is the word of God that would never, ever, ever, ever go wrong. Very, very important that you and I give thanks and praise God for who He is now. In saying that, I am fully aware that our flesh, our body, does not want to give thanks. I'm fully aware that our body, this body, hates anything to do with God because it's naturally drawn to the things of the world, yes? That's what this flesh does. It resists God. Our body does not want to worship God. It's always drawing to the things of the world. Then you've got your soul. Your soul, which is your emotions, your mind, your will. Our soul, our emotions are high and low, are very unstable at times. You might be happy today, you're angry tomorrow, and you can't be bothered the day after that. It's very up and down like this in our body. Yet our spirit is always drawing to the things of God. Our spirit always wants to press, uh, praise God for who He is. Our spirit loves the presence of God. And look what the Bible says in Hebrews 13, verse 15. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of he knew the word sacrifice. Offer to God a sacrifice of praise. The fruit of lips that openly profess His name. What does that mean? It means, church, it means this. That we don't allow our flesh or our emotions to dictate whether we should praise God or not. Okay, you missed that. We don't allow our flesh and our emotions to dictate whether we should praise or worship God or not. We sacrifice that at the altar. We lay that at the altar. And we allow our spirit man to praise God for who He is. That's sacrificing our flesh, sacrificing our emotion, and allowing our spirit man to take control of our flesh and our emotion and praising God for who He is and professing His name that He is good. That He is a good concern. That requires faith. It requires the next level of praising God for who He is. This powerful woman who has led thousands and thousands of people across the world into the presence of God. Remember at the national conference she shared uh, the battle that she was going through. Cancer. And she said, like anybody else, she started asking God, why me? Why is this happening to me? Why am I going through this? And she also shared as she was going through those moments, she started praising God for who He is. She started thanking God for who He is. Saints, that's faith. That's sacrificing our feelings and emotions and not allowing that to dictate the situation, but allowing the spirit man to praise God. That's faith. Amen? And she started praising God for who He is and started thanking God, You are good. You are a miracle-working God. You are my healer. You are my provider. I praise You and I thank You for my healing in the mighty name of of Jesus. You know today she's cancer free. Why? Because we still serve a miracle working God. There is power in praise and thankfulness. Let me challenge you this. Let me ask you this. What situation are you facing in your life right now? Maybe it's a good thing that you stop asking and start praising God for who He is. Yes? And start thanking God for who He is in spite of what we face in life. Why? Because we serve 
America working God. He's declaring the goodness of God, declaring the faithfulness of God. Saints, hear this. When you face mountains, when you face sickness and illness and you know, uh, frustration and all of those things, when challenges happen in our families or with our kids or parents or marriage or situations in our workplaces, sometimes there's an oppression and heaviness that comes upon us. This is the moment when you and I need to practice and put God's word into action. Yes, Isaiah reminds us to put on the garment of praise, to put on the garment of for the spirit of heaviness. Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. How do we get rid of those things? Simple. You start praising God for who He is. You start declaring His goodness and His mercy. Start declaring that you are good and your mercy renews every single morning. And God's people say, how did Gideon only have 300 soldiers, 300 men? How did he fight? This massive, humongous army that the Bible says that they were as numerous as the, uh, as the sea, uh, sand of the sea. How did he fight them? It's impossible for 300 men to fight a vast army. But how did uh, Gideon defeat them? Simple. They blew their trumpet and they made a joyful noise unto the Lord. How did King Jehoshaphat's army? How did they defeat this massive, humongous army? Simple. They started praising and worshipping a supernatural God. And they were defeated. They praised God for who He is. They didn't focus on the circumstance. They focused on who God is. What do you focus on when you face challenges? Well, what do you focus on when you face challenges? How about Aaron and her, when their nation was having, this is in the middle of a war, in the middle of a battle. Moses is sitting up there and Aaron and her were holding up Moses' hands. And every time he was holding up his hands, which is symbolic of praising God for who he is, they would win the battle. And every time the hands would come down, they would lose the battle. Saints, there is power in praising God for who he is. And here's one. The walls of Jericho. The walls of uh, Jericho. You notice, the walls didn't collapse when they marched around. The walls didn't collapse because of their awesome, good-looking uniform. The walls only collapsed when they started praising God. The walls only collapsed when they started declaring the goodness of God. Hear the saints. There is power in praise and thanking God for who He is. Don't ever underestimate the power of praise. The Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Don't ever be governed by your feelings and your emotions when it comes to praising God. Very powerful. It is a spiritual battle that is fought in the Spirit. Hear this. That is fought in the Spirit. Yet, it can be manifested in the natural. These guys, they saw the manifestation of that in the natural. You know, Karen, I still remember that Sunday morning in one of our services where I just felt the Spirit of God saying, just make a joyful noise. And I stood up here and I said, church, we're just going to make a joyful noise. We're going to shout, you music, make some loud noise and do something. And as we just shouted and praised God, Karen comes running up and says, God has healed me. I remember speaking over at a conference in India to a group of university students. As I was talking, I found the Spirit of God saying, challenge them to praise God and make a joyful noise. And they were very conservative. This all. And I thought, in my mind, you think, Lord, are you serious about this? But I know the Spirit of God. I know the voice of the Holy Spirit. So I said, guys, we're going to make a joyful noise unto the We're going to shout. We're going to jump, we're going to dance, you musicians, do something, make some noise. And nobody was getting excited leading up to it. They just stood there. I'm sure in my mind, there was like, are you aware that you, this is India? We don't do things like that. But one thing with God, He cuts, uh, regardless of culture, we adapt to His kingdom culture. 
We don't ever use culture and upbringing as an excuse. Yes, we are led by the Spirit. So I said, come on, guys. Let's stand. And in my mind, I was thinking, child, this better work. <laughs> yeah. So they stood up and I said, on a count of three, we're going to pray. We're going to tell you what the moment it was. One, two, three, something just broke in the atmosphere. They started jumping. They started praising. And the music, man, they went off. And suddenly, one by one, people were coming up saying, I'm healed. You know, I'll press with this. And something took, they were completely healed. Why? Because there is power in praise and worshiping God and thanking God for who He is. Don't ever underestimate the power of praise. Listen, saints. God has given us a mouth. Let's use that for to praise God for who He is. Have you ever come across people who are brilliant at expressing their opinion? Yes. Even if, even if you don't want to know their opinion, they're brilliant at expressing their opinion. Yet when it comes to praise, suddenly they're silent. You know what? I'd rather you silence with your opinion and open it when it's time to praise God. Declaring how good and powerful God is. Listen, saints. Standing like this when it's time to praise is not scriptural. Okay, let me say that again. Standing like this when it's time to praise, it's not scripture. You are being governed by your flesh. Yeah. At that moment, you're governed by your emotion. Where we should be governed by the Spirit of God. That allows us to pray. Every time you see praise in the Bible, it has to do with making a joyful noise. Yeah. The Bible says, shout out to God with a voice of triumph. Making a joyful noise. Unto the Lord is a very, very powerful thing. I want to challenge and encourage you this morning at home. Make a joyful noise. Praise God. It changes the atmosphere. It changes the atmosphere in the spirit realm. Changes the atmosphere in your family. Changes the atmosphere everywhere you go. I've learned now just to praise God and declare the goodness of God in spite of all the challenges you face in life. Pastor Russell Evans. He told a story on Thursday about how his mother, this is a very strong, influential Christian family here in our nation. Andrew Evans led a movement for a number of years, a powerful man of God. His son Andrew Evans told a story of how his mother suffered with depression, a really severe depression for a long, 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 long time. This went on and on and on, yet this is a very praying family, powerful family that loves God. She wrote a book called Being Thankful. And this powerful woman of God, she started thanking God for who He is. She started saying, Lord, I just thank you that you are good. In spite of logic and human reason. She, it's a faith statement. I thank you that you are good. I thank you that you are powerful. And then she began to thank God for her boys. I thank you, Lord, for my boys. I thank you for using them. And she discovered that the more she thanked God and praised God for who He is, she discovered that she was feeling a lot better. The next day, depression came back in. So she started again. Lord, I just thank you and I praise you for who you are. And she discovered that she was feeling much better. The next day, depression came back in. So she did this for, for a, a long a while. She did that for a number of times until she's completely, completely healed and beat depression. Why? Because there is power in thankfulness and praising God for who He is. Very, very powerful church. And I really sense that this is the word of God for us this morning. To confirm when Teresa did the communion this morning, I said, let us just take time to thank God. Praise God for who He is. Praise God for His goodness. And praise God for His mercy. The Bible tells us, enter His gates with, and His courts with, 
Christ. What did you look at this woman? Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Notice it doesn't say enter his gates with your problems. Notice it doesn't say enter his gates with your issues. Or enter his gates with whining and complaining. It says enter his gates with thanksgiving. And his court with praise. Saints, I am fully, fully convinced that thanksgiving and praise, they are God's door openers. They are God's door openers that opens the door to healing, that opens the door to freedom, that opens the door to restoration, that opens the door to revival, that opens the door in keeping your fire burning. But you must enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. See, God knows what we're facing. He's God. He knows our struggles. He knows the issues we face. He knows every single thing there is to know about us. But this is a faith statement. He's calling us, come into my court. Come into my gates with thanksgiving. Into my court with praise. And we begin to thank God for who He is and praise Him for who He is. He will move by the power of His Holy Spirit because God is only moved by faith. Not by logic or human reasoning. Hear this. God is never moved by needs. If God was moved by needs, the whole world will have no needs. He's only moved by faith. And it requires faith to enter his courts with praise. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Yes. Very powerful. And I want to challenge you. When you face challenges, start thanking God for who he is. Start praising God for who he is. Notice thankfulness, thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. The great thing about God's gates is this. It's open to anyone. Anyone, regardless of their background, regardless of who it's open to anyone. It's open to those who are skeptical. It's open to the religious people. It's open to those who don't even believe. It's open to anyone because God is a miracle working God. If you enter his gates with thanksgiving and is called with praise, God will do what he does best. Amen? Why? Because he's a miracle working God. I said, I'm so convinced. Thanksgiving and praise are God's door are open. Very, very powerful. There is power in praise. And there is power in thanksgiving and praising God for who he is. Very, very powerful. Where's... Now just in conclusion. In Luke chapter 17. <clears throat> now on his way to Jerusalem. Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and <coughs> Galilee. As he was going into a village. Ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance. They stood at a distance. There will always be people in life that will always stand from a distance. You know. See, these men, they know that they have a contagious condition. They know that. But do you know what's even more heartbreaking, saints? Is this. It's one thing to suffer from that condition. But it's another thing to know that nobody wants you. To suffer emotionally is one thing to know that nobody wants you around. Nobody wants to see you, nobody cares about you because of your condition. These men know that nobody wants them. They know that nobody wants to come near them. Nobody wants to talk to them because of their condition. Nobody. Yet, Somehow these men knew in the midst of all this contagious condition that we've got, in the midst of all of that, somehow they knew that this Jesus Christ is the only one that will help us. Yes? They knew that he's the only one that will help us, that will embrace us, that will still believe in us. So what did these men 
do because there's really there's only one option it's either you die or you start seeking out for help and what did they do they called out to God they stood in the distance and called out with a loud voice Jesus master have pity on us when he saw them he said go show yourself to the priest now watch when the miracle takes place and as they went they were they were cleansed when did the cleansing happen as they went it didn't happen straight away it didn't happen the moment they received the word the cleansing took place as they moved. Saints, I'm convinced one of the reasons why some Christians, some churches, some people are still in that same boat, they're still stuck, is because they hear God's word, but they have not acted upon it. They're just sitting there, listening it, listening to it, inspired by it, and doing nothing with it. Saints, there is power in the moving. There is power in taking that first step. As they went, imagine if they just stood there and said, well, can you come again? How about coming a bit closer? No, the miracle took place as they went. Saints, don't rely on your feelings. There are miracles that are still happening today when God's people begin to praise Him and thank Him for who He is in spite of what you're facing in your family, with your children, in spite of your work situation, you begin to praise God for who He is. You begin to thank God for who He is and you watch the hand of God in action. As they went, then they were cleansed. Now look at this. <clears throat> Jesus, Master, have been in us. If you saw, go show yourself to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. Praising God in a loud voice. Praising God in a loud voice. Loud voice. He didn't do the um, I'm just praising God for my heart. Saints, praise has to do with noise. Did you hear that? Praise has to do with noise. If you're praising God like this, seriously, you're being stubborn. And you're acting according to the flesh. There is an outward declaration of joy when we begin to praise God. Jesus said, if you don't shout, if you don't praise me, these rocks will. How embarrassing will that be if the rocks started praising God? While the people whom God created are just standing there saying, I'm just praising you from my heart. Saints, stop it. Just stop and start praising God with a loud voice. Praise always has to do with a loud voice. It's when we allow the conviction of the Holy Spirit. We allow the spirit man, in spite of our feelings and our fleshly desire, we allow the spirit man to praise God for who he is. Praise God with a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus. Thank. Here we go. Praise and thankfulness. They always, always go together. Amen. Let me ask you this. What are you thanking God for? Sometimes we focus a lot on the problem focus a lot on the issue and you've been praying and praying saints how about shifting it you've already prayed about it and here's a revelation for some of us God's not there he isn't start praising God for who he is and start thanking God for who he is most of you know the story of you know of, of, of my mum and as I said before you know when you're a teenager, you're trying really hard to be bad. 
try really hard to be bad and I would sneak in. But I would hear her pray. Hear her say, Lord, use my boy. Use him for your glory. She'll begin to praise God for who he is. Listen, if you're having a problem with your children or grandchildren, praise God for who he is. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. He's called with praise. If you're having a problem with your work, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his calls with praise. If you're having a problem finding a job, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his calls with praise. If you're having a problem with your marriage, enter his gates with thanksgiving. And his calls with praise. Having a problem with illness, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his court with praise. And praise God for who he is. Let me let you into a little bit of a secret. You know how sometimes I get frustrated by you lot. And I know sometimes you get frustrated with, with me. I see that hand. <laughs> Here's the thing, guys. You know, I've learned to enter his gate with thanksgiving. Seriously. And my prayer has changed. You'll be happy to hear that. And sometimes I'll just thank God, Lord. I just thank you for this. I thank you for this. Seriously. And I have learned, learned that when you thank God and praise God for who He is, something shifts in you. Yes? And you begin to look at people from God's perspective. You begin to love and pray for them and all of that. Because God is a good God. Come on and stand this morning. We're going to do something different this morning. Just for two minutes. I want you, just for two minutes, I want you to close your eyes, don't look around, don't look what the other person's dress is or the color of their hair is. Get that every eye is closed. Every head bowed. And I want you just to thank God for three things. Thank God for three things in your life. Let's do that right now. Just thank God for three things. Let's do that right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Straight up, even if you've been let down, I want you to thank God. Thank God for who He is. Even if you're broke, thank God for who He is. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Rushara Pasik. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Father, thank you for your precious, precious Holy Spirit. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for our church. Thank you for our family. Thank you for our parents. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you for this great nation, this great country that is known as the great south land of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for Jesus Christ. Thank you for your presence. You are a good God, powerful God, awesome God, you are. And now church, we're now going to praise God with this song, your way maker, miracle worker, light in the darkness, promise keeper. We're going to praise Him for who He is. And I want every hand, every heart, let's Praise God for who He is. Come on, let's see.
Wonderful Jesus. I'm just said to say this, every head bowed, every eyes closed. I if you are struggling with depression, listen to this. If you're struggling with depression, every eyes closed and every head bowed. I want to encourage you this morning. There is power in praising God. There is power in thanking God for who He is. And allow the Spirit of God to release you from that depression. Allow the Spirit of God to move that spirit of heaviness off you this morning. Every head bow and every eyes closed. Please, guys, I want everybody to be respectful. If that is you, if that is, can I just ask, just put up your hand so I can see you. I just want to pray for us. God wants to set to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I take authority over that spirit of depression. I take authority over that spirit of oppression. In the name of Jesus, be gone. Be gone in Jesus' mighty name. I break your hold in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we seal that door that was open to the enemy. Every door that allowed us to enter their life. Father, today we shut that completely. In the name of Jesus, when the Son says free, is free indeed. We thank you that you are a good God. We thank you that you are a good God. And Father, I pray over all of our people that are here, every person that's here today, Lord, that they will hear your voice, that you will lead them, Father, into all truth. In Jesus' mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Saints, let's give you a few minutes. You just begin to pray. Just begin to call out to God this morning. And I don't feel to open the altar this morning. So you just pray this morning. Or you might want to pray for somebody next to you. Just feel free to do that. Just pray. Then after that, we'll finish it with this song again. Praise God for who he is. Give me a few minutes to pray.